Hi, my name is Dr. Montgomery. Today I'll be talking about a concept, a very key and an important concept of circuit analysis known as Kirchhoff's current law specifically. So Kirchhoff was a German physicist, Gustav Kirchhoff specifically, great guy, huge beard and everything, very nice guy. Um, we a lot of times uh, call his Kirchhoff's current law just by noting it as the KCL rule or KCL law in circuit analysis, but as you're getting into more and more in-depth topics, this is uh, going to be a very central idea to a lot of the things that we do. So the basic idea behind what uh, Kirchhoff came up with is this uh, uh, note to say that the sum of all currents that come into or out of a node has to be equal to zero, has to sum to zero. Okay, so into or out of the node has to sum to zero, okay? So if we look at any uh, specific circuit diagram, as it were, and look at a specific node, we have to be able to add up all the currents that are coming into or out of that node, and they have to be equal to zero. So to ver start off with a really uh, more simple idea is to, if we just think of a wire here, we have a node, um, even if we put in a resistor here, let's say, tied to another resistor, as you're probably already aware, the current going through each of these resistors would have to be the same, right? But if we go ahead and define a current, let's say I1 here, and then let's say I2, just for you know arbitrary sake, is uh, pointing the opposite direction. Well, what Kirchhoff's current law tells us is that these two currents have to be equal because the sum of those two has to be zero, right? So that tells us just for this uh, series configuration, they have to be equal. Now, if we apply that then to a slightly more complicated circuit here, and, it, and in this case, it doesn't even matter if we know what all these circuit elements are are specifically, of course, we have a voltage source, capacitor, resistor, inductors. Um, but if we first go ahead and define the various current paths that are possible, so let's say we put uh, some current I1 here, uh, another current path I2 here, and then a third one, let's say, coming down the middle, I3 here, um, we can ev evaluate what those currents are doing at a specific node, right? So here we'd have two primary nodes that we could evaluate, although we'll see that they'll give us the exact um, same solution as it were. Okay, so if we look at these currents we've defined in the two different nodes here, let's specifically look at this node we'll call N1, all right? So at um, N1, to write a Kirchhoff current law equation to describe the the various circuit or the various current flows here. Let's say we have I1 coming into the node, so that'll be, let's say, a positive quantity. We have I3 coming out, so that's going to be a negative quantity because it's leaving that node. And then again, I2 is leaving the node, let's say minus I2. Again, all those have to be equal to zero. So what do we what can we learn from this equation? So a couple of things. Number one is that again, I arbitrarily defined the path that each of these currents were, the directions that each of them were flowing in. And so that doesn't matter how you initially define it because if we end up finding that some current is actually negative value, that would simply imply that the actual current flow in the circuit is in the opposite direction, of course. But it doesn't matter just in starting and setting up your problem how you define those. And then second, when we actually are writing our current uh, Kirchhoff current law equations, um, we have to be consistent into how we define what is positive and what is negative in, in looking at that specific node. So again, I've defined here I1, current I1 that's coming into this node as the positive quantity here, and then current I2 and I3 as negative quantities. Now, it would give me the same answer if I did it the exact opposite as long as I was consistent throughout the circuit that I was analyzing. Now, for sake of um, just practice, let's look at the second node here at node N2. And again, do the same thing. So I see I have current I3 coming in, so that would be a positive quantity. And then I have current I2 coming in. So again, positive quantity plus I2. And then if I follow I1, a little bit backtrack around, I see that I1 is in fact coming out of this node uh, in two here. So that'd be minus I1. Again, that has to sum to zero. Now, in fact, with this uh, more simple case, these two equations are actually identical. We could uh, manipulate them and, s and prove that they're actually the same equation because we only need one to actually define what we're doing here. And from here to actually analyze and figure out what the currents are, we would need other uh, laws that we've uh, learned about, such as Ohm's law and uh, the Kirchhoff's, cur or Kirchhoff's voltage law, which we'll cover separately to uh, help us fully analyze the circuit. But this at least gives us an idea of how we can apply Kirchhoff's current law to writing the mathematical expressions that describe the behavior of the currents in our circuit. Thank you.